we are all here. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming and spending some time with us. And special thanks to this illustrious man that we're here uh, with, um, representing you know, Miami, helping us do better our job, and really being a big part of what's happening in downtown right now and its future. So I'm going to start with Mayor Suarez. Okay. Um, Happy Mayor Monday Suarez, morning. <laughs> thank you for coming. Um, has been an ardent proponent of Miami's continued growth on a global scene, actively, actively looting the technology sector to the city. He is the former president of the Miami County League of Cities and was recently inaugurated as president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Mr. Bekir Okan is an international property magnate and the chairman of Okan Group. Founded in 1972, Okan Group boasts international experience and advanced technology. The company began in the industrial arena and has seen expanded to a real estate focus, with its first U.S. development in downtown Miami, the Okan Tower. We are also Mark joined Schoen, by... Mark <laughs> Also joined by Kasim Badak, CEO of Okan Group. The firm's investment around the world has earned the company a deep-rooted reputation in the construction, banking, textile, production, and tourism industries, among others. Continuously engaging in quality research and identifying growth opportunities, the company's global footprint has resulted in nearly 40 projects that service the communities through technological, economic, and cultural advancement. Fortuna, CEO and founder of Fortune International Group. Edgardo brings more than 30 years of industry expertise to today's conversation. He is not only revered as a visionary within South Florida's real estate market, but one of the driving forces behind its growth. Under Edgardo's lead, Fortune Development Sales handles the exclusive sales and marketing for the Ocan Tower. discussing downtown Miami's future, let's talk a little bit about its past. This is an area that has seen tremendous growth over the last decade, with people from around the world flocking to experience it firsthand. In 2014, a cover story by the Departus magazine named Miami as America's city of the future. So, Mr. Mayor, nearly eight years later, what can you say about the area's progress that provides us with such an appreciation for how much it has grown. Thank you so much for having me. And the first thing I could say is it was accurate <laughs> in 2014. This is the city of the future and it's becoming, uh, it's sort of metamorphosizing from uh, what people used to call it, which was the capital of Latin America. And I think, uh, you know, that for some would be phenomenal. And it's great for us because it obviously means that from Miami southward, um, you know, we're very connected, highly connected with the Caribbean, Central America, and with South America. But the truth of the matter is that we are graduating from that. And I think it's a, there's a generational um, transition that's happening. Uh, but we are now, from my perspective, being looked at as what I call the capital of capital or the epicenter of capital. And so we're the only uh, city in the world, frankly, that is close to the five mega markets of, uh, of Europe, um, uh, the Middle East, South America, Silicon Valley, and New York. So we're perfectly positioned in the middle. None of the other ma ma major markets are as close to each other as we are to all of them. And we've started to uh, embrace that new reality as the world is changing um, uh, through so many different ways, remote work, um, obviously, um, you know, Miami being a place that is low taxes and it's very desirable to people. Um, we're continuing to attract people from across the world. And one of the reasons why I'm so excited to be here is because this is a major project from a major developer from Turkey. That to me is incredibly significant, having the new consul general here. It's a, it's a family um, that is a magnificent family. All those things are the embodiment of what we are as a city. And so it's just very exciting for me to, to see this project come to fruition. I, I definitely concur with 
with Mayor Suarez, and this is, uh, it used to be the city of the future, and now it's the city of the present. Everybody wants to be here. I mean, we travel all over the world to promote in Miami, as, as he does, and, and really, uh, we sense it. I mean, everybody wants a piece of Miami today. It, it really, and it's not, waterfront anymore. It used to be, as, as as developers, we always try to strive to, to find the waterfront site. And today, it's an urban city. It's a, a city that, that you go to Brickell and people walk around. They really, uh, really embrace the city in all its aspects. And, and uh, Francis is doing an incredible job in attracting the companies that are, are really going to fill out this uh, activity and, and really create new opportunities and new jobs. So I am extremely excited. And, and you can't look at this as, as of today. You, whenever you buy in a project, you look at it five years from now. And, and what's happening here and, and all around us is, is really remarkable. So I'm, I'm extremely excited. And I also echo the, the sense of having developers from, from different parts of the world really attracted to, uh, to this wonderful place and creating product like this is incredible. Ben sözlerime başlarken önce Mr. Suarez'in bizim bu etkinliğine katıldığı için teşekkür ediyorum. First of all, he would like to thank Mr. Suarez, City of Miami Mayor, for attending in our sales gallery. Ayrıca baş konsolosumuz da yeni geldi Feyza Hanım. Ona da hoş geldiniz diyoruz. Yakışlayalım. Biz ilk kez 20 yıl önce Miami'ye geldik. He came here 20 years ago. Benim çocuklar burada okudu üniversiteyi. Some of, some of his kids went to University of Miami down here. Ve sonra da ona bir küçük ev almıştık. Biz de gelip giderken Miami'yi çok sevdik. Since his kids was going to school here, they purchased a condo on Miami Beach. And since then, he's coming back and forth visiting his kids, and he likes Miami. Ve ben e, geçen Aralık'ta 50. iş hayatımı kutlamasını yaptık. Past December, Mr. Okan celebrated his 50th uh, business leadership. Okan Okan Holding, e, işte gıda, tekstil, turizm, enerji konularında çalışıyor. Okan Group has a educational, well, health, health, educational, construction, food, energy, and some other entities as well. Ve uluslararası bir grubuz. Kazakistan'da, işte bu Miami'de de yatırımlarımız olacak. His company is internationally very well known and respected, credible, and now he's bringing some of his some of his investments to Miami. Ve bunu yaparken uluslararası tecrübelerimizin yanında. Hem inşaat firmamız Safok, hem e, pazarlama şirketi. As we are doing our project here in Miami, as you know, we are, high, we are working very closely with Fortune International Brokerage Firm, and also Safok as a, as a GC. Onlarla beraber çalış, çalışıp en kaliteli bir proje yapmak istiyoruz. And also we are working with the Hilton Group franchise, 20s with the Hilton Group, and we are very closely working with them. Bu ilk geldiğimiz günden beri, beş yıl önce, Suarez'le tanıştık Sayın Belediye Başkanı'yla. We met Mr. Suarez five years ago, exactly in Miami. O, Miami'yi büyütmek istiyor. He wants to make Miami bigger and better. Ve o günden beri hem dost olduk hem her konuda bize yardımcı oluyor. Since then he's been great help to us. And also we Bizi, are bizim very mor friendly. moralimizi yükseltiyor. And he's also motivating us and giving us some Tabii morale. Tabii Covid oldu, şu oldu, bu oldu. İnşallah projemize Haziran ayında temelini atacağız. As you know, the COVID came, and hopefully it go fast. And <gülüyor> we are planning first uh, week in June. Ve de bu bölgenin en güzel bir projesi olacak. It's going to be an iconic project for Miami. Çünkü projemiz karma bir proje. Hilton oteli, it's ofisler, condo otel, rezidanslardan oluşuyor. It has a hotel, it has a class A office space, a condo hotel, and sky residences. Evet. Teşekkür ederim. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Gerçi, 
Koltuk acılar daha konuşur ama ben projeyi tanıtmak için biraz fazla konuştum galiba. <gülüyor> evet. Um, with the growth of the city, obviously construction and, and everything is happening, but as well transportation is going to be an issue. You've been adamant about expanding Miami's transportation options, serving as vice chair of the Miami-Dade Transportation Planning Organization, and championing the strategic Miami Area Rapid Transit Plan to expand mass transit options in Miami-Dade County. What results are being realized, and what do you see on the horizon for downtown Miami the next five years? That's a great question, and um, you're right. As we grow, and we're growing tremendously, we have to plan for that growth. And what we're seeing is a variety of things happening in the private sector and also in the public sector that give me a lot of hope that in the future, um, we won't be overburdened or there won't be any issues re relative to our growth. Some of the things that are happening from the private sector side uh, are micro-mobility option options. You obviously see our scooters, um, which are we're one of the uh, most ridden scooter ecosystems in the entire country. Um, so that's obviously working. Uh, you also see uh, pr from the pri you also see from the public sector side are trolleys, which are free. And then I think the other thing you see from the private sector side, which is really from the development side, is the way we're developing our cities. Uh, before, it was a um, urban suburban concept, right? If you wanted to have a big house, if you wanted to have a big yard, you would live in the in the suburbs, and you would essentially commute in and have, a, unfortunately, a long commute, and it would be um, obviously be a lot of traffic, etc. Uh, now, we're seeing what I call the 15-minute walkable city, right? So that neighborhoods are being built as miniature cities. So you have Coconut Grove where you can do everything in Coconut Grove if you live in Coconut Grove. Or you can be in downtown and you have almost three cities in downtown where you have, you know, sort of uh, this area. You have obviously uh, sort of the core what was traditionally known as uh, downtown. And you have a little bit north. You have the Edgewater area as well. You have Midtown, its own sort of self-contained community, et cetera. So you see that happening. And then, uh, and that's important because people can walk uh, just about anywhere within those miniature cities uh, to do everything that they need to do to work, to enjoy themselves, et cetera. And then I think on the, on the intra city, uh, you know, you obviously have Brightline and as an intra city going from Miami, Fort Lauderdale, uh, to West Palm Beach that connects 6 million people. Uh, Intracity, one of the things that we're looking at, we're looking at two things, and they're technologies. One of them is we're working with the Boring Company, um, which is uh, Elon Musk company uh, that has created in Las Vegas a tunnel connecting uh, a lot of the major hotels to the convention center. And now Fort Lauderdale recently has accepted a, a bid from them uh, to build a tunnel there. They build tunnels at 1 200th the price that New York does, it's underground subways. And they do that by building the tunnel smaller and by vertically integrating the, um, the construction process, which reduces the cost by about uh, 90%. So that's why they're able to do it so inexpensively. That's one. The other one we're looking at is what we call, or what is known sort of as urban air mobility. And urban air mobility is, you know, we have, we have done things traditionally in transportation in a very expensive fashion. Like I just said, in New York, it's $2 billion a mile of transit. Um, it, you know, and even in, even our overground uh, metro rail is about 250 to 500 million dollars a mile in expense. Well, you have the air, which is essentially free, right? You don't have to build anything on it, and you have the ability to move across the air. And so now there are electrical uh, vehicles that are being worked on right now, and, and autonomous vehicles that will be able to to get you from one place to the other in the city using the airways, and that's something that we're also exploring. And you have companies like Joby, Archer, Hyundai, uh, that are um, rapidly developing this technology that will allow us to, to um, transport large amounts of people very quickly, very efficiently, and very inexpensively. What, what Mayor Suarez was saying is, is really true. I mean, we really need a combination of the public and the private sector to, to, to really continue to, to be able to provide the lifestyle that people are coming to Miami for. I mean, it's really a key component uh, 
to n not have the the major issues of of the big cities like like New York and and and having that ability, it's it's it's really uh, takes leadership on and, and participation on on the private sector too. I mean, it's not only transportation, but also to be able to attract those companies, we need to have affordable housing for for the employees that are going to work on those companies and and really uh, the transformation of, of of downtown Miami is it's part of it and the the the the new areas that are being uh, developed or or, or that are uh, seen as a future growth like uh, Lil Haiti and Alapata and all of those things are, are really uh, you see the transformation already of Wingwood for instance I mean uh, five six years ago nobody would like to live there and now it's, it's really uh, populated with tremendous amount of, of rental space and, and now condos are coming in I think that we we all need to contribute into that and and to create um, a like Francis was saying uh, central focuses that are autonomous and that they can really um, really live on, on on on their own to some extent and and that's what is going to create um, the differentiation between Miami and the and the rest of the cities in the world Absolutely. Mr. Okan, could you tell us a little bit more about your relationship with the Hilton brands and as well as all the support that you're receiving back from us? Okan grubu olarak 50 yılda uluslararası bir grup hep kaliteye önem verdik. Burada da işletici firma olarak işte birkaç markalar var. Hilton'u seçtik. Mr. Okan has been in business 50 years and he has done so many businesses and different entities. He, he pays attention to the quality. That's why he wanted to go with the Hilton. It's already proven and credible around the world. So that was his topic choice. Kendimiz de 33 yıldır turizmciyiz. Also, Türkiye'de 1500 yataklı otelimiz var. And he is also Kazakistan'da, Astana'da Okan Intercontinental otelimiz var. He has experience in hotel business past 35 years. He used to have a uh, Astana Intercontinental. He also has a all inclusive resort in the southern part of Turkish Riviera called Marco Polo Resort, all inclusive. Evet, dolayısıyla uh, bu konuyu da bildiğimiz için en iyi markayı seçmeye çalıştık. Because of, he has experience with the hotel back in years, so he knew Hilton would be the top choice for his. Uh, Şimdi burada kiralık şeyler de yapılıyor. Ancak niçin biz Hilton'u şey yaptık? Orada çok farklı aktiviteler olacak. The reason we are doing the mixed use project, having a Hilton and benefits restaurantları. and the facilities will be benefit to the residences of the Türkiye hamam bile olacak projemizde. But also we have a Turkish bath hamam called it will be a place in the hotel as yeah, well. Yeah, project. It's a totally different, uh, unique project. Thank you so much. And Mayor Suarez, as Miami endeavors to build a Silicon Beach um, and its reputation as a major player on the global technology scene, we've seen a new influx of capital and technology groups as key drivers in creating jobs. What is the biggest opportunity for general economic growth in downtown Miami and South Florida? Well, I think you, in a sense, in your question, you sort of articulated the opportunity, right? Which is that uh, whether we like it or not, our economy is becoming more tech-based, right? Everybody here has a cell phone. My daughter, who's three years old, takes uh, a selfie with her pacifier. So we, we know that uh, technology is here to stay. So cities across America and really across the world have two choices. They have they can pretend like it doesn't exist or they can be afraid of that disruptive change and they can run away from it. That's one choice. Or they can embrace it, try to get ahead of it, which is why we've, we've gone all out on crypto and a variety of other things to differentiate ourselves and tell the world we are open for business and we want the innovators and the creators of today and tomorrow to be doing that here, right? And we've created thousands of high paying jobs in our community and that is gonna affect three generations. I often tell people when you create a good job, you're, you're affecting 
your, the spouse or the partner or the significant other, the person. You're affecting their children. And you're frankly affecting their unborn or born grandchildren because the, the educational opportunities that their children will have will influence what kind of life their children live. So I, I look at it as a tri-generational impact every time you create a high paying job. And so, um, you know, that's just a competitive reality and landscape. And I, I think Miami is doing a phenomenal job. We're all doing it together. Right, the, from the realtors who go out and evangelize to the world what we're doing here, uh, to the developers who risk their capital, to the banks that finance the projects, uh, and to the mayor who goes on Twitter and you know talks about it constantly. Um, you know, it, it, we all have a role to play. And frankly, what's exciting about this for me is it's the first time in my life that I feel this is a city that I was born in that I love, where everybody's rowing in the same direction. We all want to see things improve. We all, all want to see progress. We all want to see the city sort of metamorphosize into this next step. And I know it's gonna sound kind of silly, but create do global dominance, like be the dominant city of the future. Um, and we see it happening. It's actually happening before our very eyes. And it's exciting to watch for a city that I grew up in. It was known as sort of a tourist destination and a bit of a retirement community to now see a tremendous you know, amount of finance and technology coming and us being really the epicenter of where capital allocation decisions are, are gonna be made and where the companies are, of tomorrow are gonna be formed. That's what the new world is looking like and we're quickly emerging as the uh, premier player in that game. Thank you, and, and I think we speak you know, here in general as you know, all the power shaker uh, brokers are right now with us. Um, we thank you very much because you have been paving the way, you have been incredibly campaigning to make our job a little bit easier. Um, and I think that um, please continue what you do because um, you do it. No, I, I uh, obviously agree. Technology is, is totally transformational and, and COVID has showed us that you can work from any place in the world and, and why not to choose Miami to work from. I mean, so it's, it's really uh, attracting these companies that, that change the environment on a constant basis. Is, it's a key component to being the city that, that, that the mayor is ambitioning and that we all are going to enjoy in the future. So I, I really I echo uh, Carmen's words and thanking you for all you do because it really uh, you are, you're an example to, to the rest of the world. Thank you. Şimdi daha önce de bahsettim 20 yıl önce gelmiştik biz buraya. Havası, iklimi, yaşamı çok beğendik ve bu yatırıma karar verdik. As he said it before, he has been here past 20 years. He likes the weather, diversity and the people of South Florida Miami is amazing and he, he feels like at home. Uluslararası yatırımcılar şuna dikkat eder. Bir bürokrasi but but I'm sorry, Mr. Okan, but let me let me wear my sales hat and and and tell you why this is the this is an incredible value. I mean, this uh, to have this type of architecture, to have this type of this building in this location is second to none. I mean, how could you uh, imagine having a three hundred thousand dollar investment here and and getting all this? I mean, the the combination. Of, of the retail space, the hotel space, and the office, and, and, the, and even the, the pool on the roof on the 60-some floor up there uh, with those views is, is really incredible. So the one that doesn't understand that doesn't understand real estate in Miami, and, and that's why all of you are here, and that's where it is. really this is an incredible value that is going to multiply in the future, and people see it. Did you say 300,000? Yes. Wow. 390. That makes a little more sense. But. Yeah, I, I, I, I, give me three. I mean, it's like <laughs> th 390. Uh, Where is Rafa? Sign him up. I'm yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, let me tell you, and I'll, I'll act as a salesman too because that's part of my job. And I'll tell you that um, a project at this location, at that price point, 
is unheard of in this market, as you all know. I mean, you guys see the the sort of overheated market that we're in, and to be at that price point, I mean, it's going to make your job and your life a lot easier because it should sell like hotcakes. Anything that we can expect that the city is going to announce soon and that we can use as, as, Absolutely. as, as to, you know, keep So I'll tell you three things quickly. Yes. One is... Um, we are at a 2013, uh, almost a 10-year low in homelessness. And when you juxtapose that against uh, cities across America, they're dealing with a totally different dynamic. So that's one, one statistic. We just put out a what do we call functional zero plan to be one of the first large urban cities in America to be at zero. We want to be at zero homeless. Um, we're number one in the nation in tech job growth. We're number one in the nation in tech job migration. Um, we have attracted a trillion, 200 billion in assets under management companies to Miami in the last 16 months. Okay, according to uh, PitchBook, which is a you know, preeminent uh, venture capital uh, publication, we've grown 200% year over year in completed um, um, funding technology deals in one year. 200% growth in one year. If we do that for two more years, and that's a very pretty aggressive growth, we would overtake San Francisco, which is incredible. I mean, if you were talking about that a year ago, you would say, you're crazy, you, know, you, you should be committed. So I think those are some uh, statistics. We also went down in homicides 25% year over year last year. Um, we're the, we were ranked the happiest city in America, we were ranked the healthiest city in America, and we're number one in pandemic recovery. So if you can't sell Miami with those statistics, <laughs> Maybe you should think about doing something else. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So I think that this is all the time that we have. We appreciate that you came, that you dedicated these words of wisdom for everybody. I think that was tremendous and we can I just say one last thing before he finishes? Uh, first of all, I've become very close uh, to the Okan family, uh, Marat. Uh, they're a beautiful family. I'm, I feel very blessed, frankly, that they have decided to do this investment here. This is important for us. We do, you know, buildings, and, and every building is important. I feel like every building is like a child of mine, right? It's, it's, it's like a baby that I'm birthing. But this one is particularly special. The connection to, to the country of Turkey is very important to us. And... You know, he, he, he gave us an excellent icebreaker by falling on the ground and making us feel like we were worried for him. But the, but, but the, it was stage. Of course it was. Of course it was. But the truth is that when he first met me, I was a commissioner. Then I became the mayor. Now I'm president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. So by the time this building is completed, where am I going to be? The White House. Hey, yeah, come on. for you guys. Inside. Biz, biz Sayın Başkan'ın o görevlere geleceğine inanıyoruz ve destekliyoruz. We believe he will be in the White House one day and we are supporting him 100%. He, he, will, he will be in the White House but with, always with the eyes on Miami and making Miami the best place ever. You just can't list it, okay? You can't, put the, you can't list the White House, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> Şimdi izin verirseniz bir de başkonsolosumuz var. Yeni geldi, bir hafta oldu. Ona, ona bir, bir söz verelim. I'll stand on this corner. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Feyza Barutçu. I am the new Consul General of Turkey in Miami. Uh, new, literally, as in this is my second week. Um, yes. So I'm very happy and excited to be here. And also, uh, with this project, um, this is a bigger project than I, even I had anticipated. So I am disappointed and happy at the same time in that I didn't get to contribute anything to this project. And uh, basically, I don't have any job left to do in Miami. So I don't know, I don't know what's coming next. But uh, jokes aside, um, again, thank you for welcoming me here today. Um, I hope uh, in any event, this project will have uh, the support of the Turkish government as well. And hopefully many more to come. Um, again, I couldn't contribute in the past, but I'm going to try my best to do it in the future. Thank you, Wonderful. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>